Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at combining the SUMIF function with the indirect function for dynamic worksheet and table references. So I have this summary sheet with a drop down list to choose a region from and each sheet at the bottom is a region. I have London, Paris, Dublin and Toronto and then another cell with a drop down list for a category of expense. And if we look at those sheets, for example Paris, column A has the category and then the expense in column B. And if I look at Dublin and same for London and Toronto, they have the exact same structure. Column A category, column B expense. But what I want to do on the summary sheet is sum that expense for that region. The expense is a value in column A of each sheet, but then I need to be able to reference the sheet dynamically depending what one somebody chooses from a list. And that's what indirect is going to do for us. So let's go straight into cell C3 and start the sum if function. And from here, it will prompt me for a range. Now the range that we're testing is dependent on the sheet mentioned in region here. So this is where indirect comes in because I want to indirectly reference the text in cell A3 as a reference, as an address. So I'm going to click on cell A3 and then I need to put in my ampersand to write the rest of that criteria in. So the reference to that cell is dynamic. I don't know what people are going to choose in there, but the rest of it I do know. I need to open up my double quotes and put an exclamation mark because all sheet references have an exclamation mark after them. And then I'm just going to type column A because in this example, I know for all of the sheets that uh, the category is mentioned in column A. I'll close off those double quotes and then I'll close off the indirect function. There is another argument within the indirect function, uh, which is to specify what type of address you want to use, whether it's an A1 reference or an R1C1 reference. If you ignore that optional question, it will keep with the A1 style referencing, which we're quite happy with here. I'm referencing column A. I want to use that style. A comma brings on to the criteria section of the SUMIF function. That one's nice and easy. It's just a reference to cell B3 for the category that forms our condition. But when we put in our comma, we will need indirect again to reference the right sheet for the sum range. So I'm going to type it in. I could copy the one I had before. This is going to be very similar. But it's an indirect reference to cell A3 to pick up the sheet name. And then we're going to concatenate onto that the exclamation mark. And this time it's column B. That's where the expenses are written. A closing bracket for indirect, another close bracket for the sum if function. And if I press enter, I have the total for marketing expenses in Toronto. But if I was to change that to equipment expenses, it works. And if I change Toronto to London, or even to Paris, it is working. I have a dynamic reference to a sheet name based on a cell value by using indirect uh, within a sum if function. Obviously the same can easily apply with count if and so on. What I thought I'd do next, now we've looked at how to use it with a worksheet reference, is to explore using it with a table reference because table references are so encouraged nowadays in the way that we work with data. So you may have your uh, spreadsheet data stored that way. So over on the other sheets, I now have them in a table and keeping with the consistency, I'm on a London sheet. Guess what I called the table? Yes, I called it London. And if I was to come down to the Paris sheet, where that data is also already in a table. And what's the table called? It's called Paris. And I think you get the idea with Dublin and Toronto. 
So just like the name of the sheets are named appropriately and consistently, so are my tables. Now just quickly, depending on how familiar you are with tables, let's imagine I was going to do a sum if in a, a kind of constant way without necessarily that dynamic nature. And I, for the range, just go and click on Dublin and I select the categories. Notice the way that that is written. So this is your structured reference to the name of the table, Dublin, and then category. So the real difference this time compared to the previous worksheet example, I'm still going to have Dublin at the start, just like I did with the sheet. But instead of the exclamation mark following the sheet name, this time it's not. I'm going to need to put in that open square uh, bracket, the kind of angle bracket, and then put the name of the column category instead of A, like I did in the previous example. So it's only a, a little change, really, on the way that we worked with before. So if I just go into that formula from before, the sum of indirect, the A3 bit will be the same, but this bit is not. It's not an exclamation mark column A. This time it's an open square bracket category, category, closing square bracket. And the same again with the other indirect, but this time it's going to be open square bracket for the field name, the column name. It's called expense, if I remember rightly, closing square bracket. And if I press enter, it continues to work like the previous example. Doesn't matter what category I choose or what, it, uh, what region I may choose, whether it's Toronto or London, that will continue to work. Now using that table reference, that structure reference, but being able to still refer to a cell value uh, in order to dynamically reference that table um, in much the same way that we referenced the worksheet beforehand. So that was using the sum if and the indirect function together. I hope you found that video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.